welcome back to my channel i'm so excited to be back i know it's been a minute since i've been on here um since i dropped the vlog since i've done anything but so much has happened your girl is finally getting married Woo! <laughs> and so uh today i wanted to formally introduce my fiance um we're gonna ask a few questions just so you all can get to know us our story and yeah i guess give some advice in the middle of it um and just to talk about things that we're going to be expecting the things that we're going to be doing now that we're engaged um going into our marriage so hello everyone for this video y'all will formally know me as ashlyn's fiance so that's what i'm gonna go by in this video <laughs> maybe later on y'all will know who i really am but this ain't about me it's about us, so yes. But they have to know your name. Ashlyn's fiance. Ashlyn's fiance. That's who I am. Okay. <laughs> Y'all could, Mister Amazing, but Ashlyn's oh fiance. God. He I'm is Mister Amazing. Okay, so for our first question, how did you meet? Uh, we met each other off Instagram. <laughs> Millennial type stuff, Instagram. So this how so we follow each other on Instagram. We really don't know how we follow each other in the first place. We just have we both from Florida. We we literally she's a year younger than me, so we're really around the same, you know, age range, you know all that. So we follow a lot of mutuals, so we from Florida, um, and we just happen to follow each other. Don't really know how, uh, but it we just follow each other. So um at first uh we started interacting with each other literally i interacted with her first just off some stories like you know when she posts a a story i'll say one simple thing but it wasn't me trying to get at her just like oh she's pretty you know little simple stuff like that and then when i will post like a story or like me talking she'll say simple like 100 or like she agree like something like that so it wasn't nothing like we ain't was we wasn't trying to get at each other but when i was responding to her stories i literally thought she was the most beautiful woman i ever seen so you know so i already you know saw her but um you know we fought each other that was us off just complimenting on stories like you know months you know we ain't really say nothing so the f not the first time i tried to get to know her this was like a uh semi approach like all right let me see if i could at least find out who she was but i wasn't really going hard she uh posted one story that she was going to a, a concert the goody mob concert. goody mob concert mind y'all i didn't care i didn't care about i didn't care about the concert i saw her story and i was like oh you know yeah i was like man you know maybe this is a shoot you know if you know maybe just a chance oh maybe i could i could meet up with her but it wasn't like oh i got him it was like oh let me let me try whatever like so i, I wrote her on her story i was like shoot if you know if you don't find nobody or you still trying to look for somebody like shoot i'll go with you and then uh she like you live you know you live out here in the a and i was like yeah so she was like okay i'll let you you know know whatever so I wrote her again like, hey, you found someone to go? She like, yeah, I'm going with my friend. And I was like, and that was basically it. I was like, okay, cool. It was like, it was no more, I interact again or like none. It was like, you know, like a little semi approach. I wasn't really going there. I was like, okay, cool. So a couple months passed like from that interaction. I actually <laughs> attempted. So I was like, oh, you know, you know, let's, uh, you know, I said, I would love to meet you one day, all that stuff, woody woo, you know, um, as his fiance, um, who I am, she said, oh. He didn't uh, even say who he was. I, 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 he just kept talking. Yeah. So I said, I said, let me see you, uh, you know, I said, I would love to meet with you, all that. She was like, yeah, this, you know, I'm Ashlyn, here's my number, let's talk. I was, she's like, I'm available, uh, like, next week uh so i was like yeah i'm gonna hit you up so i got her number i called her on the phone we texted literally calling on the phone everything was going good i was like yeah you know i got a little bit of sense of who she was just off the phone and like texting a little bit you know i was like hey i, I got let, let me plan the date 
let's go uh, uh, to the spot I know you know next week I'm free all that stuff so everything was going good literally the her 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 energy on the phone was good I literally like okay she's she's interested you know like okay everything's going good all that set up a date the week comes up the date you know I'm like I you know I'm like I'm like excited for it I wasn't I don't get nervous I was excited to meet her <laughs> I got, I'm looking clean I got nice haircut all that stuff you know I'm like all right okay cool she's definitely gonna you know she's gonna see me in person like like she's gonna see like no I really look like how I look online this is not no catfish and no nothing this is how I look so I'm looking good you know I go to the spot we went it was a nice cocktail uh, cocktail bar real classy uh, elegant real nice spot so I'm there waiting for her to come she's like She's taking a little minute to come, so I'm like hitting her up. So I'm like, yo, you okay? Like, so she ain't come. So y'all, let me tell y'all. She stood me up on our on our date night. And at first when she wasn't coming, I was like, y'all, cause this has never happened to me. I was like, at first, I ain't even took as her like standing me up. I said like something so bad had to happen. She got in an accident. Like I, I literally like no, a family member had to die. I was like something crazy had to happen because the vibe, like literally the vibe she gave off was like she was hella interested. Good energy through the, the phone call, text message, all something was wrong. I said, hey, you know, uh, if something is wrong, yeah, let me know. At that point. After I texted her and then like she ain't text me back, I was like, damn, she really stood me up. And at that point, I don't know what the reason was at that point. I was like, well, at that point, I was like, well, on to the next, you know, on to the next one. Now, you know, I was living my single life. <laughs> I was like, well, on to the next one. Let me, uh, like, let me get, let me continue having fun being single. Five months have passed, right? Mm -hmm. So during these months, uh I'm a so I'm a Christian. I believe in God. But during that that time I will, you know, ask God like, you know, I want you to bless me with a like amazing, you know, of course, beautiful. I wasn't settling, y'all. I literally asked God for everything. I said I want a beautiful, <laughs> God fearing, kind, sweet, um woman who's fun to talk. Like I I asked for everything. Don't settle, y'all. Ask for everything. I ask literally God for everything. Mm -hmm. Like, my wife is going to have everything I want, everything I need. So, literally, it was one random day. It was during the week. Like, my beautiful fiance, Ashlyn here, she literally popped in my head. Like, literally, just randomly popped in my head. I was like, I don't know why, but I was like, I wanted to write her back, like, text her. You know, my pride was like, nah, don't text her back. Like, you don't. Like, no one's ever stood, yo, why would you text her back? Like, that was my pride. Like, nah, you, like, I was like, I, I always believe I'm that guy. Like, I always believe, like, no, like, you no one should, like, nah, she, I was like, she she did try, like, I literally felt tried, like, nah, she tried me. I, but, like, something was telling me, like, like, God was speaking to me, like, nah, don't let your pride get in the way. So, it's, you know, like, it's a reason that ain't happening. It's a reason, you know, she ain't going. It's a reason, I, you know, I was like, and literally, I was sitting there, you know how you know uh, how people get like a flower ripped off the sunflower, like wh how is like, should I, should I not, oh, yeah. should I? So it was like, I, I have no flower, but it was like imaginary, should I, should I not, should I, should I not, should I, should I not. So I landed on the should I with my imaginary flower, <laughs> and I was like, you know what, I'm going to text her one time, one time only. If she don't text back. You know, it's dead, it's moving on, this ain't the one. I texted her, I was like, hey, it's me again. You know, um, if you are still single and are still interested, I would love to still meet you, all of that and everything. And y'all, once I sent that text message, she texted me back, good time, very good timely manner. I'm going to say that no, right she, there. She texted me back immediately, <laughs> very good manner, and she said, hey, uh, I am in a very good headspace now. I am interested in all that. And at that point, I was like, 
bet. You know, the day came, I found an, a, another good spot, good a bar, a, a classy bar, very nice, uh, you know, all of that. And she came to my place, and yeah, she was just so beautiful, so gorgeous, like extremely nice. Everything I was like, you know, I had to, you know, I came up to her like, I gave her a hug. I was like, you know, you smell really nice. <laughs> and, yeah, and, you know, she complimenting me back. I'm complimenting her. So everything's going good. Literally, y'all, the date went great. The date went amazing. You know, I had to be a gent. I was a gentleman, you know, she like, so she knew I was a gentleman off the date. First impression was good. Uh, the date was the conversation was flowing like it was never awkward never weird and one thing happened at the date that i think kind of boosted boosted me up a little bit like she knew like oh yeah he was. Was so <laughs> like i said we went to a nice bar very good bar but oh. we were sitting down so there was a little commotion had that happened at the bar basically these two guys for some reason they were right but they're about to fight each other right oh. so they were tough like they literally started grabbing each other everything so i literally got up and you know i shielded her and you know i was like them dudes that close here try to if, if they get over here you know i make sure you good they ain't gonna get over here you know i made sure like protect her so i feel like when she saw that she like oh he he ain't soft like he gonna he gonna protect me like so i feel like that boosted me Little like she knew like oh okay he not soft he gonna he gonna protect me so which I was if something happened but you yeah, know but that's how you got your name Superman. Well there it is but that's that situation happened literally y'all that's how we met the date went good and you know we talked and then we joked about why she stood me up and yes. everything all that and then at that point I didn't care y'all I was like. I, I like nah I like God if this is the one like this is the one because I literally was feeling I was like nah this one I out of first of all like like I said y'all she was just the most beautiful woman I ever seen um everything literally that I wanted like from just that first interaction conversation personality all of that stuff question number two how did your partner propose okay so y'all at the end of this i'm gonna show y'all a clip of the proposal but back in what this was march around march he had told me that he we was gonna do a photo shoot so i had my birthday's in march so i had already set up this plan to do my own photo shoot so I, in my head i'm like what we taking pictures for because we had already took pictures back in october so i'm like what we taking pictures for but he didn't say why he was like we're just taking pictures so i'm like all right cool whatever i know because he's a planner that i learned to not question when he plans things because i trust him enough to plan because he has shown me that he can plan like to the t this man know how to plan so i'm like okay i know him i'm just gonna let him do him that's just him so come i'm like I, probably like two weeks after he had told me i'm like okay so what color we wearing like what we doing like he not giving me no details he's just saying we having photo shoots so i'm like okay like mm, what's going on here and he has always like said things like oh we're gonna get married i'm gonna propose it's just not it's 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 not yeah. if it's just when okay so that's where march going through i'm like okay like what color are we doing planning so he tells me that we got a photo shoot on April 1st. So I'm like, okay, cool. April 1st, we got a photo shoot. Time passed, time passed, time passed. And we getting ready for our photo shoot. And so I'm like getting dressed. Like, you know, I'm just getting dressed. My family not saying anything. My friends not saying anything. But I'm going to let y'all know this. I was so nervous about just my proposal in general because in my mind like I, again i trusted him to do what he was going to do but i want i wanted all my family to be at my proposal i want all my close friends all my close family i wanted everybody to be there so in the back of my mind i'm like okay nobody not saying anything but what if this is my proposal what if he not what if he just trying to like you know set something up and because he's not giving full details on why we got a photo shoot so 
I'm getting dressed, whatever. I'm like, okay, cool, whatever. We get ready to go. He like, we headed to the photo shoot. So he tells me the photo shoot is at 7 p.m. So I'm like, why? In my head, I'm like, why does man plan a 7 p.m. photo shoot? Like, who take pictures at 7 p.m.? Y'all, I'm on. I'm, I'm. I've been telling my mama like, oh yeah, we got a photo shoot. I'm showing her outfits. She on the phone like. Y'all some photo taking behind people. I'm like, girl, I know it ain't me. It's just him playing the photos. Whole time, sis know what's going on. So I'm like, all right, cool. So we get ready to go to the photo shoot. He driving up. And it's like a, a building and a door and you go through. And we started walking. But the door to the building is kind of like that see-through but foggy type of look. So all I seen was like lights, like bright lights. And I seen like red so i i figured it was roses he opened the door y'all it was so beautiful he had um the um uh, marry me like the big marry me light signs it was flowers um it was roses and candles on the ground and all our family and friends were there and i just started boohoo crying and y'all were so mad. I was lucky trying not to because I had went and got my makeup done. And I spent $125 on my makeup. So I was not trying to ruin my makeup at all. But I ended up crying. And I was just so shocked and overjoyed and overwhelmed. Because like everybody that I love and that were close to me were in the room. And people who I did not even know were going to be there or capable of being there were there. And it speech. Oh, yeah. Was speech was beautiful it was everything everything was just planned so well like he had planned my birthday like with literally two weeks before it in and it was just like dang like you did all this for me and it was so beautiful and it was everything that i had dreamed of it was everything i had been seeing on tiktok that i had been saving because <laughs> so the proposal was that's how he proposed. he tricked me on april fool's day and said that we were having a photo shoot one thing everybody always gonna remember when April Fools come, <laughs> they gotta know that this day Ashton got proposed to. Yeah. Um, you know how she said how she was looking at TikToks and all that stuff, how people getting proposed and all that stuff. I never wanted to do uh no shade to nobody who does it like this to each his own. But I I ain't wanna do just no restaurant proposal or just someone's house or something like that or i want to do no no uh no just just us where i just propose it just us two there it was always going to be a photo shoot type of proposal photo shoot because i know okay i'm gonna get a professional photographer and at least we're gonna have real professional pictures and that you know memories to hold on to not just iphone video or so i want real professional stuff so yeah it, it it took a lot of planning y'all i'm gonna say that i ain't gonna go too much detail but with her birthday <laughs> and proposal planning all day i was like listen some nights at work i was like oh my gosh like this <laughs> is a lot but i'm but, and i'm grateful but you know they say pressure either bust pipes or make diamonds and we both like diamonds so the job gets done yes and so, i am a diamond yes she's a diamond has a diamond has diamonds so diamonds yeah. if i'm a diamond then i deserve to be taken care of like a diamond yeah yeah ladies yeah yeah i make sure she's always taken care of because she always she takes care of me mm -hmm. so ladies out there yes you, you do what you got to do, a good man going to find you and take care of you. If you do what you got to do, I'm going to leave it like that. How did you know your partner was the one? I feel like for you to be ready for the one, you have to want, want the one before the one comes to you. So like she said, you have to already be intentional basically from day one like this is your attention you want to find the one if you just cruising in life i hope the one comes to me i feel y'all listen feel like not saying you know to each his own but i feel like you're gonna miss out on the one or you're or the one's never gonna come to you because you not intentionally want to find the one 
you just cruising hoping comes. So I think the one finally comes to you when you decide like, no, I want the one, like the one you're gonna search for the one, like all that, and you're gonna discern every potential person like, hey, this is the one. So I knew when she was the one, cause like I said, y'all, I was asking God for this type of woman. Um, you know, I prayed and then, uh, you know, I was intentional from day one when I met her and then uh, I, I got that feeling, that feeling that I never had before, like, she's different, like, this is the one and, you know, I was intentional from day one and honestly, I honestly knew she was the one, like, the week of, the moment I met her, like, okay, oh, this, the, this is the one, yeah, like, the week, like, the week of, like, the one I'm gonna take serious, serious, okay. yes, now, now, I, what I would say, even though I knew, like, I wanted, so I wanted her to be the one. And once I knew for sure, I was like, yeah, it's time for me to stop playing, put a ring on it, like, let's uh, get ready. I want to already start the process and the steps to go to the next level and really build an empire. So, yeah, y'all, that's... So for me, um, I knew he was the one because, so like how I mentioned during that time before he reached out to me, I went through a dis depressing stage or whatever. Um, I had wrote a letter to God and I wrote a letter to my future husband. And in the letter to my future husband, I just, it was, I was having a conversation with him. It was basically like I was thanking him, kind of like I was manifesting the love and the relationship that we would have so in the letter to my husband i was thanking him for being like patient and kind and slow slow to anger and thank you for being like the opposite of me and knowing how to knowing how to keep me calm and change me um and you know just this being a godly relationship that he's able to love me physically mentally spiritually emotionally like those are the things I was saying, but also there was something in the letter where I had specifically put in there, kind of like um, it wasn't like a characteristic of him. It was it was an action that he would do that I was praying for that I wrote in the letter before he made me his girlfriend. The action that I put in the letter he had did like basically like let's slow dance, let's slow dance to um some slow music and you kiss my forehead one night we playing karaoke at my house we just you know playing games karaoke whatever and he randomly said he's like hey let's let's slow dance let's learn how to like slow dance and practice dancing together and he was like um just in case we have to go to an event or somebody wedding and we need to dance so i'm like okay so while we slow dancing he kisses my forehead y'all man kiss my forehead he kissed my forehead and I was like okay first it was him asking me to slow dance we slow dance I had never did that with anybody let alone I had just wrote in my letter about him doing that I, asked, I never told him my daughter so he had asked me to be his girlfriend in January in January when he asked me to be his girlfriend he gave me this um card and in the card it had seven promises and the promises were the promises that I had wrote in my letter to him basically like correlating to my in my letter to him and so i was just like y'all i was in so much shock i'm like god this is crazy like i gotta show him this letter like i really felt like this this was it like this was that so i had shown him the letter and he was like whoa like that is crazy so basically it was like i manifested him that's when i kind of knew he was the one like Cause I just knew that it was basically like me saying, God, if this is my husband, show me or God send me my husband and then show me in the way that I asked or the actions that I wrote in my letter. Probably months into our relationship, like he started doing things like um, what I knew I needed, like the way that he would be patient with me, the way that he loved me, the way that he took care of me, the way that he was so intentional um, and the relationship was easy. like. It didn't feel like I was having to pull teeth. I didn't have to do that to him. There were a lot of things that I had felt that he just did as a man and showed true leadership. There were things that he did as a man and there so were- So I was already a man. Oh my God. <laughs>
There were things that he did that, that made me comfortable. And question. What is your favorite thing about your partner? What do you love about me? What is your favorite thing about me? <laughs> so what's your favorite? Uh, I guess it, uh... Okay. Favorite? Cause she does everything so great. It's pretty hard to choose. But you have to. Okay, t t tell me, like, in what ask? It doesn't matter. No, like, in what ask? I'm like, okay, like, what do you, like, like... Like what is it? What does it mean? Like personality wise, it or does something not that matter. You do for what me? is your favorite thing about your partner? When you first think of me, and or say your your brothers ask you, what's your favorite thing about Ashlyn? Uh, you got to bring it to the level. So my favorite thing, ultimately, is the most important thing to me, honestly, in a relationship is respect. Uh, that's my favorite thing that she respects me because if she truly respects me she's gonna respect me in every other regard and she's gonna give me love loyalty basically respect but also and vice versa I give respect to get respect so is that she is respectful of, of me uh, she respects uh, my family respects my friends uh, all my family friends love her like they like it, it's like they knew she was the one too they like yeah this is like before like the proposal everything like they knew like they they all love her which I'm glad because I, I love them too you know I, I definitely believe each other's family should love the person you're with mm -hmm. not saying you know to everybody each his own if your family don't like then you know it, I mean it's y'all love but it just makes it easier and just not awkward like it's not weird like so I definitely uh, you my favorite thing about him is that I can always count on him literally always like I know that he's always going to make sure that I'm happy and he's going to make sure that if I ask him for something like it he doesn't make me feel like I'm, I'm being needy or that I'm asking too much of him like he's always like okay how can I help you like how can I be of a server to you? Like, how can I serve you? How can I make sure that you feel good? How can I make sure that you're happy? Like, that's my favorite thing because I've always, like, I in the past was the person that always was like, do you need something? Like, you good? You need this? Like, I always try to be of service to other people or I always try to make sure that other people feel good or they got what they desire. So it feels good to be in a relationship where someone else is always is also concerned about your well-being your happiness and making sure that you get what whatever you want like and they are going to go above and beyond to make sure that you get it and so that's my favorite thing about him and it makes me just want to love him more and do more for him because i'm like dang that feels good to like have a reciprocated relationship where the person also like in that manner is selfless because even if i don't like He's not like one of the people like, oh, I need this, I need that. Like, he's he's not like that. That's me. I'm like, babe, can you do this for me? Can you do that? Can you do that? Sometimes I'll be like, ooh, let me just. But he does it so freely. Like, he doesn't get an attitude. Well, if he does, I don't see it because he just be like, yeah, okay. He can get something and go do it. And that's my favorite thing because it's like my love language is acts of service. And that's important in a relationship. Your partner has to get your love language. You cannot love your partner in your love language. Love your partner in the love language that they are telling you, like, hey, this is my love language. And that allows them to be able to be of service for you. So you won't feel um, taken for granted or you won't feel like your partner not doing anything. Or you think, oh, well, I'm doing this for you, I'm doing this for you. And it's like, that ain't my love language. I didn't ask you to do that. Now, if you, if you were doing what... I'm telling you my love is and how I feel appreciated and how I accept love, then that'll be a difference. So yeah. and what I would add to that is how she said, uh, both parties should always continue to serve each other all mm -hmm. the time. No matter if you're married or engaged, you need to constantly serve each other. The whole happy wife, happy life is a myth. That's a lie. It's happy. <laughs> Both people 
happy life is one person just can't be happy both parties have to serve each other and make both people both of y'all happy then it's happy life so i was that's my two cents i could both parties should always serve each other and constantly yeah. serve each other find new ways to serve each other so yeah the next question is what has been the biggest challenge in your relationship so far i'm saying biggest in terms of so we don't argue that much in our relationship when we do have an argument you know we do argue but we have good conflict resolution and we get over it uh, but the biggest thing we have to learn about each other is how we handle conflict resolution in the terms of so basically so I'm a <laughs> solutions guy I'm like if there is a problem or argument let's find a solution and once we find a solution I'm good like alright everything's settled I could literally be I could literally be mad we argue once we find a solution we we, we solve it I'm literally all right babe I'm happy again let's go like we good like I'm in love like I'm in love like all right like, I literally could be I could get over being mad in like one second like one minute the moment the res is resolve everything is good I'm ready to be all lovey dovey all let's talk let's have conversation let's <laughs> so that's who I am I find solutions she on the other hand at the beginning of her relationship she's like when she got mad or angry she needed space mm -hmm. and I wasn't good like you know I'm like why you need space like we're done is the argument is over we resolved it she's like no I still I just need space so I had to learn like she's one of the people that just needs space to cool to cool down mm -hmm. so my cool down period is one second I'm over it like I never I don't hold I don't stay mad I never was a person who hold grudges not saying she holds grudges but I never I don't like being mad that's not an emotion I like to stay in I don't like staying sad like I literally, I'm a solutions guy, positive, like calm, cool, cool. Like, that's always been me. So I get over it in one second, I'm good. She, on the other hand, needs her space, her time out to chill, just cool down and, you know, I guess assess what just <laughs> happened, all that. So I had to learn and we used to have arguments. I'd be like, why are you still mad? We're good now. She's like, nah, give me time. I'm like what <laughs> so we can't be good now like you gotta you gotta no. yeah we, I, I, we, you can't show me some loving like what's up she like no nah. and then yeah, our argument will start because of that and then but i gradually learned all right like if we do argue she needs space just give give her space and then either it takes an hour or she just needs to take a nap and then she's all good so i learned like all right let me play ps5 did help because mm -hmm. I have a PS5, so she got me a PS5. So the moment she got I I'm on the PS5 playing Call of Duty, uh, Harry Potter. It's a good <laughs> game for y'all. Uh, so I'll, the, while she's mad, I'm playing the game. So that's I learned that now. So that was the biggest challenge I had to learn is who she was when it came to conflict resolution. Was she a, a gave her space or can she handle it immediately and be good? So I figured that she's not. She give her space person. I'm like, I'm good. But we both have compromised now. Mm -hmm. Now, and like, if we do argue, she learn like, okay, this argument ain't worth staying mad. Like, I'm, she literally could be good now. The moment's over and we find that, yeah, she compromised. Like, you know, so I would say that was the, in my opinion, the biggest challenge in our relationship. Yeah, I agree with him. Um, That, that. I guess I will word it into more of as boundaries. Um, I know going into the relationship, my amazing fiance did not have a good grasp on boundaries. Um, and so for me, me telling him during arguments like, hey, give me a second. I don't give me, let me think. That's, that was a boundary for me because um, I took therapy to learn how to control my anger because I used to have a really bad attitude. Um, so when i got with him it was kind of like bro chill out now like leave me alone like i need a second like give me some time to 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 think about this before i 
say something to you in anger that I'm going to regret that I said because I'm saying it because you won't leave me alone right now and I'm telling you to leave me alone. So that was like a big, a big challenge in the beginning of just trying to establish that boundary and know who he is in arguments and know who I am in arguments because again, like he said, he he'll we'll have an argument and then after that he be trying to like oh babe like you wanna watch a movie that I'm like do not touch me like side eye don't touch me do not say a word to me like I'm looking at you like I'm about to jump on you and you but leave me alone so it I'm has looking clueless he, like, yeah and then that made me even more mad because I'd be like why are you sitting here and he used to be like. Why, why are you mad about that? It's not even that deep. And oh, y'all, that ooh, <laughs> I do not tell me it's not that deep when I'm mad because now it's gonna get deeper. <laughs> Just learning that, and that's maturity, and me knowing and realizing, like, okay, this is somebody that I really want to be with. This is somebody I love, and if he can have patience with me through my attitudes and my moments, and I could have patience with him, and I could learn to, um, I could learn to empathize his commun and how he communicate. And say like, okay, you know, Ashlyn, like, this ain't a situation where you gotta be like that. Like, that's not how each other look. And I remember when we first started dating, he had told me like, he never wants to leave each other. What was it? I said I never want to leave each other angry. Like, if we have to go somewhere or just you know, go I to sleep want, like, go or to, like, leave each other. Like, like, you know, I you know, I I, I heard many stories and seen many people like their loved ones passed away or they they die and the last thing they said was an argument or something hateful and mm -hmm. they literally regret it for the rest of their life. So I said I never want to be in that position, but God, so yeah, so God covered. that plays a major part in me like realizing and knowing like okay, Ashton like. It's a time and place for everything. It's a time to be angry. And it's a time to not be angry. It's a time to have adjustable reason as to why I'm telling him, hey, give me some space. I don't want to talk right now. Leave me alone. And then there's sometimes where he can be like, you know what? Let's talk this out. But then afterwards, leave me alone. And one thing, I, one thing, oh yeah, one thing else I also say to her is, I'm a, even when it's at work, like arguing is like, it might be uh, chaotic in an argument. I always I try love. to show her love through chaos. Mm -hmm. Like it's like I may be angry at you, but like if I'm like like arguing with you, I'm a do it in a loving, arguing way. And that's one thing that I did. I love about our relationship. We really, don't argue a lot. We don't argue a lot, which is crazy. It's like if we do have arguments, we argue, but we not arguing like every day back to back every two we don't do that like we probably have probably one or two arguments out of the month yeah maybe one out of a month and sometimes we don't have one in a month yeah sometimes we go a month we go months without arguing i said we have debates <laughs> we well, have strong, strong, strong debates. debates our strong arguments be debates. debates we go and debate we'll go to debate back and back back to back back to that like that be our arguments we debating because he's opinionated i'm opinionated and he'll say his opinion i say my opinion and then i'll challenge his opinion and hit so like those that's and i think that's a good way to look at it because every time you have a disagreement it's not an argument you can disagree in a relationship and it not be exploded into an argument so i like that we say debates we do we have Yes. Debates, but I learned through our debates. It'd be like intelligent debates because his mind just be like, I was like, Where did you get that from? Like, <laughs> what? what was your thought process? Sometimes, I, sometimes we want to talk about the culture, next, we want to talk about the Bible. oh, yeah, we talk, we about, talk everything. about the presidency, or we talk about money, or we I talk get, about yeah. theories and scams. And it'd be and, mainly me because I get passionate. He starts saying that, and then I get like so passionate and hype, and I'd be like, what are you talking about? That's not it. That's not that's not what that is about. But baby, don't let us talk about religion and spirituality or the role of a man and woman. We be at that. Those be our big topics we be talking about. Yes. Or culture. Culture. Culture, culture talks. So culture yeah. Talks. And is what is the best relationship advice you've ever received? Best advice. I mean, this is cliche because everybody. <laughs> I say, okay. Always keep God first, pray, 
for God, for the type of relationship you want, and you know, you do the things God told you to do, and just always, as in both, pray for each other, and you know, you go to church and make sure y'all make a godly relationship. So, mm -hmm. but in the terms of action, uh, it is communicating. It is. But it's like open communication, telling each other. I believe the best advice is tell each other what you really want mm -hmm. out of this, out of the other person, and what you really need from them. Like I want this from you. I I need this, and I expect this, so that person can know if they can meet your wants, your needs, and your expectations. And you know, I feel like when people don't say what they want and need and what they expect from you, then you just do stuff that you think they might want or might need or you don't do it at all then the person is yeah. like mad or, or or like sad or like doubting the relationship because they like you're not giving me what i want well you never told me what you want you never i don't really know i mean i could give you the basics but what do you really want mm -hmm. out of me so i believe that's the best advice like open communication and Letting your partner know what do you want, what do you need, what do you expect, so your partner could either realize, oh, I can't do that, or they know, like, oh, I really can't do all that, and then you tell your partner, hey, this is what I can't, can't do, but I could compromise here, and then your partner either, mm -hmm. and they're going to stay with you, or they're going to leave you, and because they don't want to take what you have to give them. So The best advice I got, um... The whole communication thing, that's one important thing that stuck out to me was to love each other through the changes because um, you are going to grow throughout your relationship and throughout your, you and your partner are going to grow. You're going to grow from singleness to now being joint as one to, to marriage, to family. And I already know for myself People change. You change. You grow. Like right now, I'm 28. I'm going to be a whole different woman at 38. I'm going to be a whole different woman at 30. I'm gonna be, You know what I'm saying? So it's kind of like love your partner through those changes. Love your partner through those phases that they are growing. Because you got to think that when you get married, you don't stop growing. That's when you really grow. That's when you really find out things about yourself that you didn't know. That's when you really find out things about your partner you didn't know. So to love them through those moments and not criticize them through those moments or try to fight the change that they're growing through in those moments will help your relationship to be um, organic and authentic. It'll help you all both know that you genuinely love each other because just imagine he changed and I'm like, well, you wasn't doing that five years ago. Love your partner through each phase of their life. Like, and at one point he gonna have, what is called a man? When men go through a certain phase? Uh, midlife crisis, basically. Yeah. Yeah, you gonna have a midlife crisis. Well, you gonna wake up one day and realize you're 40 and probably almost bald. And nah, then you're gonna... <laughs> nah. I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. I'm not going to wake up bald. My hair, and then he gonna have a my, whole attitude. My amazing, here with me. my amazing hair, my hairline, my beard. Yeah, no, be no, we gonna rebuke that. It'll be intact. <laughs> Next question is, how do you keep your relationship strong? Continue doing what you've been doing since day one and grow. So don't get complacent uh, and don't decrease or what's the word so like if so i'd say fellas don't do what you're doing since day one if you was doing all these you know dating her all this stuff and everything continue to do that continue to date don't get complacent don't lose yourself i see a lot of guys when they get in a relationship they get fat out of shape keep yourself attractive for your know, woman if you was keeping yourself attractive for 10 women 20 whatever how many women you was getting now you Locked down, you should be trying to make yourself the most attractive now for your women. Like, always continue what you're doing and upgrade physically, mentally, spiritually, financially. Continue to go up, never go down. And uh, that's what I say for both parties. Like, the woman should continue to do what she was doing and continue to do more, find more ways. So, that's how you keep the relationship uh, uh, strong and. Um, 
respect both parties respect each other both mm. parties be loyal to each other both parties uh, uh, communicate both parties trust each other that's how I believe your relationship strong me it's prayer God God keep God in the center in the center I think since the moment that we officially had decided to be intentional about being committed to each other um, and being exclusive to each other and for me it's been prayer like Prayer through the good times, prayer through the bad times, asking God for direction um, on what I need to do, on what we should do together. Because if we're saying that this is a godly couple and that God is in the center of our relationship, how do we expect for it to stay strong without his advice, without his His approval, without his um, word? So for me, it has definitely been going to God, seeking God making sure God knows what's going on in the relationship, getting advice from God so that we can continue to be strong together um, but have him as the, the glue piece, the gel um, molding us and, you know, bringing us together um, and not trying to give up because something happened or not trying to give up because we feel like the weak moments that we experience are weak moments that we can't endure or get over. And I know when I go to God, and I put on my worship music. Everything be all right. All right. It will be all right. So yeah. Question, what are your plans for the future? Our plans, of course, to get married, Please. have children, and uh, <laughs> grow our, get out of, uh, clear all our debt. Yes. Uh, get more money. Uh, uh, business flourishing and uh, become wealthy and should continue to be a godly marriage. That's the plan. Yeah. We actually, well, the order that we, and, you know, it's so crazy because when you think about it, we are actually doing it in the right way, but we do, we, we getting married. Um, we actually about to start premarital counseling. Um, so that's our first step in, you know, preparing for our marriage and making sure that we are on track because when I say I do, baby God, all them blessings God told me that he was going to give <laughs> and do, I am expecting it for it to rain on me. So we're going to do premarital counseling and then we're just going to take, we did say it was going to take like a year, a year and a half, almost two before we have kids after marriage so we can like he said clear debt save start like businesses so we could just have a stable foundation before we think about bringing babies in um, before we pop a jet yeah before i we just pop a jet out i'm not in no rush i'm like i said i'm 28 i at least want to have kids by 30 31 no i said that like in the 30 31 so i feel like that gives us time still for each other and then we don't have to feel like we rushing to to do stuff like I feel like we did it we did it right we getting you know we getting married we're we're doing what we need to do um and I think it, it works better like that it does for the folks not from Florida jit means child so, <laughs> right so, so that's what I, I mean by know. jit so the folks from not from Florida yeah so we have any jits running around our house yeah we're going to enjoy, enjoy each other's time. Because sometimes he be a jit. <laughs> She's a big jit. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, we want to wait. And I think ideally that's what's best for both of us. And then, yeah, then it'll, be, it'll work out how it's supposed to. So, those are our plans for the future. Um, in the current future, I'll be wedding planning. And we will keep y'all up to date. Well, I'm, I'm going to keep y'all up to date because this is going to be a a wedding series that I'm going to post on my YouTube channel just to keep y'all updated to show y'all how I feel um we shoot for May of next year 2024 so I gotta I don't know I feel like it's a lot of time but I look he feel like it's not a lot of time because a year goes by like time, this time be flying. yeah a year goes by fast so yeah, well, thank y'all for watching. I'm so excited that you had a chance to meet my amazing fiance, who I love so dearly. So, so much. Mm. <laughs>
And um, I'll see y'all next video. See y'all later.